So in with this series, what I'll be trying to teach you is macroeconomics, the macroeconomics that you learn in first year university. I'll be trying to teach you what I learned myself when I did first year economics. And without further ado, I'll start off with a talk about the, a time and output graph. So a time and output graph. Time and output graph. So what is the time and output graph? Well, first, before we get to the graph, actually I'd like to talk about two definitions, and that's actual that's actual output and for convenience we'll just call actual output y. And what is actual output? Well I'll just give you the definition after I'll talk about potential output as well. So potential output. Potential output. And for convenience, we'll just say that potential output is Y star. Now, actual output is simple. It's what the economy actually produces. So what the economy produces. Economy produces. It's just as the word sounds. Actual is what they actually produce. The potential output, on the other hand, is what the economy can normally produce. What the economy can normally produce. Normally produces. So just remember that these are what's. What the economy produces is actual and what the economy normally produces or what can they produce. This is the difference between actual and potential output. Now about this graph, let's just draw our graph here. And let's say that the vertical axis is the output and that the horizontal axis is time. Now let's say that this is our potential output, just a upward sloping uh, a line or graph and this is our potential output. Y star. Now, normally we would have a graph sort of like this, and that is what economics is. I don't really know how to explain it more clearly, but it makes sense, right? The economy doesn't go on forever, they have their ups and downs, and this would be an example of an up, and this would be an example of a down. Now, let's label these. Two is, well, what you can call two is two, you can call it a boom. Two. And what this is, is it's when the economy is doing really well. But we all know that booms do, does not go on forever. Does not go on forever. Why may it not go on forever? Well, there are a lot of factors, but some factors that we can easily say is for example, demand and the supply. Demand and supply is a factor which affects how when we have a boom, we can't have a boom forever. And another thing would be taxes. Taxes would be another factor that, that influences how this graph looks and that's why that influences how a boom cannot go on forever. Now one is, let's label one as the, the, the recession, the, um, yeah, let's just call it a recession. So one, what is happening here? Well, nobody is spending. Nobody's spending. So when nobody is spending, that means they're tight on money, and we have a recession. And when people, and when we have a recession, there's normally like no jobs, and when people have no jobs, they have no money to spend. So we have no money in, we get no money out. And we can call this a recessionary gap. Well, a 
recessionary gap is a recessionary gap is when uh, when the actual output is less than the potential output so y is less than y star so the red line is our y and the well the, the red line is our potential output and the black line is our actual wait oh well, sorry the red line is our actual output and the black line is our potential output so between here and here where y is less than y star, that's our recessionary gap. Now, our inflationary gap, that is just the opposite. Inflationary gap. I'm sure you can guess that an inflationary gap is when y is greater than y st star. So, for example, from here to here, that is when y is greater than y star. And that is an inflationary gap. Now, let's talk about what happens in recession a little. Give you a briefing on that. What happens in a recession is, of course, the actual output goes down. So, why? Our actual output goes down. A recovery is... The opposite when y goes up you can also call recovery an expansion doesn't really matter now there's two things that you should know and these are two terms that you may never heard about well maybe one of the terms you have heard about and that's a tro and peak Obviously, we heard of peak before. Well, most of us doing business have learned of, have heard of a peak, and that's the high point. It's usually the highest point or a high point in a graph, and a tro is a low point. So, if I just gave us a graph right now, gave us a graph. So let's. Have this be our y star, our potential output. Now let's have this graph be our actual output y. So from this graph, what we can tell is that this would be a peak. Let's just change different colors. This would be a peak, and let's 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 label the peak triangle. And this point here would be our peak, the high point. Now, the low point, we can tell, is here. And we could just label that a star. Let's just label that a star. That's all you need to know about a tro and a peak.